My name's John Speed and I've just finished a PhD in the Russell Group uh, looking at Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy is very similar to infrared spectroscopy in that we look at the vibrations of molecules. So all molecules are made of atoms and those atoms are held together via chemical bonds and they can vibrate, they're a bit like springs. So take water for example. Water contains one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Now that can either vibrate symmetrically where the OH bonds vibrate at the same rate it can vibrate anti-symmetrically, where one vibrates and then the other one, or it can bend, where it bends in the middle. And each one of those modes corresponds to a different amount of energy, which in turn corresponds to a different wavelength of infrared light. And from that you can get a spectrum, so you can identify which compound you have. Raman spectroscopy is very similar to infrared spectroscopy, however there are a few fundamental differences. One of the major ones being that water doesn't show up in Raman, or at least it's very, very weak. This means we can use Raman to look at biological molecules or biological systems and electrochemical systems as well. The one problem with Raman is it is actually a very weak process. Only about one in every million photons of light actually undergoes Raman scattering, which means you either need a very concentrated sample or a very, very long scan time to get any decent spectra. In 1974, here in Southampton in fact, uh, Martin Fleischmann, Patrick Hendra and Jim McQuillan discovered something called surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy where they used a rough and silver electrode and they saw a thousand fold increase in their spectrum of pyridine. Since then thousands and thousands of papers have been published uh, using SIRS, surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy and that's what I've used to do my PhD. So light is effectively trapped on the surface of the metal and once it's trapped there it causes the electrons at the very edge of the metals, at the very surface, to become excited and they form something called a surface plasmon. This plasmon is essentially an electron wave that's a stationary, it's a standing wave and it doesn't move and it's stuck at certain points on the substrate. By using that it creates a really really strong electric field that we can then use to get really good Raman spectra. So my PhD uses something called sphere segment void substrates or SSV for short. We make those by taking a gold slide and we clean it and then we place some um, polystyrene spheres onto it which line up in a hexagonal array, so it kind of goes A, B, A, B, A, B. We then place that in a gold plating solution and we use electrochemistry to turn gold ions into gold metal and we plate around the spheres. We then dissolve the spheres away leaving, uh, using solvent and we're left with just this perfect template of a, a kind of honeycomb structure of gold. Uh, these, the honeycombs, the actual sphere voids inside the gold are the same size as the wavelength of light, which means when we shine the light into it, it creates these plasmons and we can use those for SIRS. Previous work in our group actually used a variety of different sphere sizes and film heights and metals to work out what was the best substrate to use for what we do and we use gold. We use a, a gold uh, substrate because it's very stable to air, it's very stable to everything and they last a very long time. One of the most successful parts of my PhD was using nanoparticles. So I took one of the, uh, the SSV substrates and I added silver nanoparticles to the top and I did that by forming a layer of macaptoaniline, which has a sulfur at one end that binds to the gold very, very strongly, and a nitrogen at the other end that kind of sticks upright, almost like a forest of uh, organic molecules. When you place that in a solution of silver colloids or silver nanoparticles, the silver forms a strong bond to the nitrogen and it sticks. And the whole thing lines up perfectly with your organic molecule in the middle, your gold at the bottom and your silver nanoparticle at the top. And that creates a very, very strong but very local electric field. Um, it's incredibly strong, but very, very small. The big structure of the void, the, uh, the gold part, focuses the light down, almost like a satellite dish, and that sits in the very, very bottom, and it focuses onto the electric field between the nanoparticle and your organic molecule. And it creates such a strong field that it guides the light into that you get a really strong spectrum. The uh, spectrum that we have is actually about a thousand times stronger than it was without the nanoparticle. Uh, which is a huge increase when you consider we've got a 10 to the 6 increase just by using the, the uh, surface. So overall that's a kind of 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10 increase over just having the molecule by itself. Interestingly you do need the structured surface, so here's an example of the nanoparticle on flat gold and you can see the substrate or the uh, spectrum that comes off is nowhere near as strong as it is when you've got the structured substrate underneath. So hopefully we want to use this kind of technology to increase uh, to increase the sensitivity of our uh, detection or to form some kind of instrument that will look at very very low concentrations of molecules. For example a roadside drug test would be to use this system in a portable Raman, a portable Raman spectrometer that a policeman could have in the back of their car 
they stop someone at the side of the road and take a sample of saliva. They could place this sample into the spectrometer and they could instantly identify whether that person has been taking illegal drugs because metabolites from the drugs will stay in the saliva and will be excreted and can therefore be detected very easily. This is much, much cheaper than the common technique of using mass spectrometry and much faster as well, seeing as it can be done instantly, no blood tests and no need for a lab and can be used pretty much anywhere in the country.